Hello and welcome to episode 36 of the Comedian's Tea Party with Cy Deves. This week I have got Paul Savage. He is a lovely guy, a very funny comedian, a very good artist. I mean, he's on a few podcasts at the minute advertising a comic book that he's released and it's very funny. He's released a few of his things on social media and very, very funny. Getting shout outs on the radio and all sorts. So go and give that a look if you like what he's all about, which you should do because he's a lovely man. We have a little chat at the start. You may realise what, as soon, literally as soon as we get started, he lives on a boat and does talk about that a little bit. I mean, I instigate it, I believe. Well, no, <laughs> it's one of the first things he says, actually. There's also a moment where I, I mention his kids. He, he posted on his on Facebook about how he's looking after his sister's kids, just to give that bit some context when when that comes up, just in case you think, what's he talking about? What's he bringing that up for? That is why. There's some very slight sound issues. It's not too bad. But basically, like his voice will sound distorted at points. It's just because, for some reason that I could not work out, his feed was coming through extremely loud, so I've edited it and, and tweaked it, and it sounds pretty good, I think. So I think at any point, hmm, it could have been worse. So you're welcome. At one point, Paul was telling a very lovely moving story, telling me about something, which you will hear, and I was interrupted by my cat, Roisin, who, she's absolutely lovely. I re- no, she's brilliant, but it permeated a moment of tension. But we did also come to realise that it could very well be a good thing for serious shows. So listen in for that. If you've ever thought about writing a serious show, I've got some advice for you. It's in the podcast. Have a listen. We also talk about a thing called benign violation, which is a phrase that I've not heard before. It's very good. It's basically if you enjoy kids being knocked over by cats, that is benign violation. And I do. It's very funny. Oh. Before you get further into this, by the way, if you're offended by swearing and and, uh, and more swearing, there's some swearing in this. So get get over it, probably. It's a funny episode, so cr- crack on. There's also a point near the end, just as we're going into the team emergency question section, where I mentioned something very... Basically, uh, what happened was <laughs> I was talking to him and all of a sudden his forehead was the entire image it was just, he'd moved his phone in particularly close and all I could see was his forehead. So that was funny. But that's, again, for context, when it comes up, you're going to think, what was that? That was what it was. As I so often do, I forgot to ask him for his social media links. So listen through to the end and I will tell you what they are. Also, it gives me a brand new team urgency question, which I think is very exciting. So definitely listen in for that. So until that comes up, listen through and enjoy and I'll see you at the end with his social media links and other links and that sort of thing enjoy Hello, how are you? Oh, hello. Good. There we are. Yeah, there we go. I know you were never going to, Simon, but don't buy a boat. <laughs> I wasn't planning on it. My extra virgin olive oil has frozen in its jar, which is interesting. Oh, that is interesting. Yeah. How cold is it there? It's probably, well, I can see my breath in front of me. So oh, uh, probably cold. about just, I'm in the shadow of the flyover, so it's it is fairly cold. I'm not staying on it, I'm staying at my brother's. Oh, okay. I is that- do up things on it. Looking after his kids. So no, no, that was my sister's kids. Oh, yeah. um, no, I'm just using it as a place to stay. Well, basically, the engine broke just before Christmas. Oh, bloody hell. Long back and forth with the insurance company. Eventually, they agreed that it just needs to be taken out, put another one in. Oh. Which they've agreed to pay for, which is good. Uh, so they came yesterday and took it out. And then there's a load of sort of like bludge and oil and rust and stuff under where the engine sat that I've never been able to get to because oh. fucking engine on it. So I've taken that, the opportunity to paint all that properly and prime it. So that's what I've come across to do today. Oh, well, that sounds like fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You've got to have your little hobbies, haven't you? Absolutely. And apparently wading knee deep in gross stuff is mine. Yeah. That's nice. fun. Yeah, sounds good. Have you been doing any sort of Zoom gigs or whatnot? I've done a couple. I've got one more booked in, but I'm sort of, I'm, 
I, I was a late adopter to to going on them because I was trying to avoid <laughs> them for a while. But yeah. some of them are right. What's your um? Have you got a day job then? Yeah, I so I, I used to work in a music shop and then I was furloughed and then yeah. eventually made redundant from that and then. I, I was a full-time comedian <laughs> during the third lockdown, yeah. <laughs> and then yeah, and then I ran out of money. So uh, now I work in Screwfix. Okay, well that's a bit of a boom industry at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, uh, it really. Because everyone's going, yes, yeah, so I will fix up things. Yeah, things they pay back. Seen. They pay back all of their furlough from the first lockdown. That's how well they did. Wow, really? Yeah, crazy. That's good. Uh, so what's the premise of this? So I can pretend that I'm a major listener. Oh, even it's, not, it's, I apologize. it's just a chat. It's already started. We've we've already started recording. <laughs> it's all. <laughs> apologize. <laughs> uh, I apologize for my rudeness. There. Uh, no worries. I, I, I think there's uh, only a few people who regularly listen who have asked to come on. But I'd yeah, say... I mean, I had, I did ask to come on. <laughs> it's just normally I do some research and like listen to a few. Yeah, but. You're missing out. It's very We're busy, good. mate. We've yeah, got... <laughs> I'm sure I am. Yes, but otherwise I'm good. Yeah, basically I was, I was I was taking that sort of little bit of downtime to try and nail a script that I've been trying to write for a sitcom. Oh, cool. And uh, and didn't didn't do it in time, so I had to get a job. Yeah, what was the uh, sitcom on? Or are you is that too hush hush? No, I'm still working it. I've talked about it a couple of times. Uh, I won't go into too much detail. But it's funny that you should say don't buy a boat because I'm writing the treatment at the minute and then well, I'm rewriting it from what I wrote last year. And uh, one of the episodes now involves a boat. Uh, well, there is, to be fair, a lot of material that you can garner from doing up a canal boat. Yeah. I managed to get 20 minutes out of it for the first year that I owned it for my Edinburgh show that year. And then pre-lockdown, because I wasn't doing Edinburgh, my plan was to write it up into an hour. So, like, take certain other stuff from different shows I've written right. uh, and make it a bit more boaty and take it round canal boat, sort of like little canal oh. boat communities. Just go, right, if you get 30 people in a pub, we'll do a show and it'll be specifically for people who own canal boats. Oh, nice. I, I was uh, actually I was going to ask about that. Like, have you ever considered sort of touring? on the boat and there you go yeah it's um it's a weird one because there's about three or four of us who live on uh comedians who live on canal boats yeah Me, the late great incognito lived on a canal boat for about uh, 20 years did he yeah i know cressida wetton yeah cressida wetton does and karen bailey used to live in the same oh really arena as me up in birmingham that's when i bought the boat there i lived there for about a year but she doesn't move hers hers has stayed in the place since she bought it is just oh, right. like a floating whereas i've done more like and hers is all sort of like the electricity's plumbed in and the plumbing is plumbed <laughs> out and <laughs> right. so it's less so it's a, uh, a, a static hers was like a, a fully functional boat you know it was a place to live yeah whereas mine has been very much a project of doing it up and making it good again and going through all of the horrible diy things so i was able to generate quite a lot of material from that of just nice this yeah. is this is what happens when you slightly have a little bit of a crisis and go right. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a boat. I'm gonna see what I'll do. So uh, yeah, yeah, uh, been fun though. If I ever run out of material, I'll, I'll buy a boat. Yeah, there's a thing with Darren Brian. I think it was who said when he was starting out that he'd just if he didn't have any material, he'd pay and go and do a thing, right? Just to generate the material. So he'd like okay. I've got no jokes this month. I'm going to go do a skydive. Yeah. Because if nothing else, I'll get five minutes out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, this has been a long way around (laughs) of just going like, yeah, if I keep doing shows about this canal boat, I'll pay it off by 2025. (laughs) uh... Nice. Oh, sorry. That was supposed to be a really in the future number. That was supposed to be in the far, like 2055, which was supposed to be like a funny joke in the future. I forgot that that's four years away. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. We're living in the future and it's weird. Yeah, because we're living in the future, but it's not really the future that we envisioned, is it? No, it's where you were like, we were promised jet cars and we'd all be hoverboards. You'll be, you'll be going to work on the moon. And then yeah. it's like, you'll be going to work, but you'll be doing it over the internet. You're like, wow. <laughs> uh, but it's still boring. It's yeah. still like, 
you won't need to go to Hollywood to see the really great comedians. They'll be playing on your house and you can interact with them. Cool. Yeah. What's that like? Ah, oh, it's actually quite tedious. <laughs> like, <laughs> they'll be doing it on a Zoom gig. They're, they're in their pyjamas. You're in your pyjamas. It's not that fun. Somehow still costs 20 quid. Yeah. And you, <laughs> also, they sort of like, forget what the term is, but it was, it's sort of like basically it's a boring dystopia where in, because when all of the, there was like the flashy, like, woo, we'll live on the moon and you'll, you'll take roller skates, but they'll fly and yeah. you'll, do that. and then there was sort of like, it'll be grim and gritty and everyone will be horrible and you'll have a barcode in your arm. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We've taken the sort of like, okay, but what if we didn't have a barcode in your arm? What if you had a thing in your pocket that just constantly advertised to you? based on other stuff that you've seen and listened into your conversations but it wasn't doing it for any sinister reasons other than to sell you tea bags or <laughs> yeah. um you know, oh, right. and, uh, i mean it seems like a little bit of a waste with some of the you know we can get inside your mind and we're going to find out all your secrets and it turns out like your biggest secret isn't of any financial value yeah yeah, yeah. So, it's that you like uh, to buy oh, weird things on i'm which... gonna be able to blackmail you that like I was thinking the other day because I was chatting to somebody and she was sort of like fairly new friendship. I was chatting to them and some got onto a topic and I was like, yeah, it was like a little bit, normally would be a little bit difficult for people. She was like, that's very brave of you to say that. And I was like, I mean, it is because that's the thing that we don't talk about. But equally, I did stand up on it the next day. Yeah. Because I've got no filter. I'm just like, oh, a thing happened to me. I'm going to talk about it on stage. Yeah. Like, I'm working on the future Edinburgh, my sad hour. Uh, you know, the, the classic, yeah. like sad Edinburgh, like have a, because I basically, like, I've got a really interesting thing that happened to me. I think it's funny. I need, to, I've got a load of jokes around it, but it's going to take a ton of work yeah. to be a comfortable saying it. I did it, um, you know those like storytelling nights, yeah, where it's like it doesn't have to be funny, but yeah, yeah. sometimes be like just just come up, say some words, come up and say some words, and everyone actually please don't make it material, yeah, just do it truthfully. And I did it at one of those called Tales for Whatever in the French, and then was shaking afterwards because it's just so this is a weird thing that happened to me. Right, I'm probably going to have to tell you what it is now. Just I, because, I, uh, yeah, I'm, I am intrigued. If you don't want it on a uh, podcast, yeah. I can I can just bleep it the whole. No, no, it's uh, basically when I was a teenager, I was groomed, right. but I didn't know it at the time, and then well, and sort of like had a weird feeling and was like, right, I need to, I'm going to end the sort of like weird a bit of this relationship. I'm just, it, and then we went back to being friends. Yeah, because uh, he was only about three, four years older than me. Right. And then years later, I found out that he'd uh, been caught grooming someone who was 14 oh. and had shot himself. Oh. And yeah. And so you're like, it's a re- like, it's a really interesting story. Yeah. But how do I turn? And like, I can definitely turn it into something. But like, like I, d- I wonder if I take it up to the fringe and do it as theatre rather than comedy. Yeah. Like because, a spoken word. But, but yeah, like a spoken word thing, because like, it's an interesting story, but equally, do you want to relive that every night for... Yeah, um, I mean, you just got to look for, at Richard Gadd. With, yeah, yeah, because yeah. um, Richard Gadd and Hannah Gadsby like, both did really brutal emotional shows. Yeah. And everyone was like, yeah, cool, it's like... But I saw Hannah Gadsby's next show, the one that's called like Douglas. Ah, oh, and I liked it so much more. Oh, yeah. It was just funny. It was just a funny show. Like she was like, I've run out of trauma. I couldn't <laughs> put all the trauma in one show. Yeah. Here's some jokes about art galleries and you're like, Hey, <laughs> lovely. I really enjoy this, thank you. <laughs> nice. And I do wonder if because my persona is a bit of a, you know, sort of slightly every man happy go lucky dickhead. Yeah, yeah is where you're going yeah i wonder if like i'm putting too much on my on an audience who because I, I think it would be all right if i had a fan base yeah uh where you go yeah this is oh you know me from tv but also 
I'm being artistic now, and they would go, cool, well, we're still going to pay the uh, £10 ticket fee because yeah. we know you, and thanks for doing that. That's very brave of you. Whereas it can just be like, we don't know who you are. You've just grabbed us on the street and told us there's a comedy show and it's free. And uh, yeah, you've just, you've brought up your trauma and we, we're not sure where to go with this. Yeah. So it's an interesting one. But luckily, it looks like all comedy's broken forever. And so there won't be a fringe in 2021. Yeah. Uh, so may, maybe having three years off to actually write the fucking thing will <laughs> <laughs> mean that I can... Uh, sort through all of those tricky little problems um i don't mind you keeping that bit in by the way um cool sorry to to oh, no, no, ruin the end fine. of it My, uh, I've, I've got a kitten recently and she's just went <gasps> downstairs and started smashing into the mic stand <laughs> it's, it's a the, the r- glamour, really genuine the bit of conversation of followed by <laughs> <laughs> uh yes please if you would like to uh, <laughs> i mean maybe that's how i do it when i do turn it into a show is every time there was a bit of horrible trauma bring out a kitten that i bring up or somebody starts just pull out a kitten yeah look, look at the kitten nobody's gonna look complain about it. that yeah it's crawling on the floor with a ball of yarn so anyway this was my <laughs> <laughs> i mean that does sound like a a, a, a genuine sort of comedic device. Of... <laughs> yeah, I'm starting to think that might be the way to do it. <laughs> just have a box of kittens. Every time there's a oh, horrible trauma, look at his face. He's wearing a fluffy bow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah. That's and that that'd be um actually a good one to work it out. You know how sort of like we go. Oh, because uh, you've you've done the fringe a few times, haven't you? Yes, not officially as such, but I have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, there's always like days where it's like this is too hard a show to do on because it runs daily for three and a half weeks. Yeah, is you can have a brilliant show on a Monday because the people who are coming to see it are, you know sort of like people who go to see comedy shows on a Monday. Yeah, yeah. They're sort of a little bit more, they're like, oh, yeah. And then you can get ones on like Friday, Saturday, where it's like there's people who are out day drinking and they've gone, yeah. we should go see a comedy show because Stag there's dudes. loads around. And they go, brilliant. C- could you go to see a different comedy show? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the next story is doing quite a fun little piece. It's all about drinking and shagging, and you'll enjoy that. Yeah. And I am doing a piece about me being molested as a child, so yeah. probably don't don't come to that. No, like, but yeah, you, that would be a good one today. I've just been like, how was the show? And just like, only needed three kittens today. <laughs> <laughs> so like, how, how was it? Seven. We needed seven yeah. kittens. <laughs> just I'm having to get more kittens. <laughs> it's, just, it's just too harrowing. <laughs> You may have to get like toddlers to come and play with the kittens to sort of <laughs> as a multiplier. Have you ever seen and this if you've never seen it, I will change your goddamn life. Okay. YouTube toddlers being knocked over by cats. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I I can't say I've searched that specifically, but I have definitely seen videos of kids being knocked yeah, over yeah, by yeah, cats yeah. and it is the so, best thing uh, in the world. Well the beautiful thing is that occasionally they'll just pop up on people's timelines. Yeah. And then somebody out there a good, decent person has basically made a compilation of a hundred of them. But it's always as well, it's like baby's first steps. <laughs> so they're in the garden, all fat-legged and wobbling, and then a cat from just out of nowhere will come out and just... Boop. And because it's really nice, there's a thing of... It's a little comedy theory thing called benign violation, basically. Okay. Uh, is the name of it, which is basically that on the scale of things, that basically comedy is a violation so if you've violated people's, like, you know, those big shouty, like, American, Canadian comics who are like, I'm going to fist fuck a grandma in this journey. And you're yeah, like, yeah. yes, that is a violation, but you've you've not given me the benign part that makes it fine. Uh, yeah. Whereas if Tony Law does it because he looks all beardy and uh, like a big cartoon scarecrow, you go, that's actually really <laughs> hilarious. Yeah. You, uh, and, you know, sometimes when you see people and you're like, oh, it's just a bit twee, like, give me something real, give me a bit of grit. Yeah. yeah. And, like, when it's in the sweet spot, and that's what the children being knocked over, uh, toddlers being knocked over by cats is perfect for that because it is a violation. It's a cat hunting another animal. Yeah. Uh, it's benign because it just it, it's a small child and it drops on its nap and it's really funny. Yeah. And whereas if it was, you know, a bigger cat, a smaller child, it wouldn't be funny. You know? Yeah. Uh, cats swiping the face of babies, horrific. Uh, just, <laughs> but because it's just going, ah, 
and knocking them over. It's really funny. Yeah, nice. Yeah, that's see, because I, I come to I come to comedy from a, a musical background, and so sort of from writing sets and stuff, I, I know full well that you need dynamics. You know, because yes. you, you need the quiet parts to make the loud parts louder. Yes, yes. Uh, there was a quote actually. It was written on the side of somebody's boat, but it says, "You need silence. It's music's best friend." Yeah, and. I think it's also comedy's best friend, you know, of the bits where I'm going to have to do a quiet bit to make the loud bit louder. Yeah. And you, the amount of like rough and tumble club comedians who then go into an arts centre and are like, I don't know how to play this because they're not attacking me. Yeah. I'm very much, you know, I've got to make them play off the front foot so that then I can be off the back foot, but, you know, counter attacking and yeah. all that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's very um, it's a it's a it's a it's a very interesting thing when you're putting together sets and stuff. So, what what, what sort of bands were you in? Were you uh, singer songwriter or no? Yeah, I was in indie-ish, punky sort of. Uh, nice. The the last band that I was in was sort of indie ska was the description that we gave it. Nice. Which was sort of it's like the Smiths meets the Specials. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. What were they called? What was that band? That was the Riots. And uh, <laughs> uh, that's that's the point where you're like, what was I in a band called? <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's it it a good while ago. Cool. <laughs> it's, it's about ten years ago, I think. But is it on um, any of the old platforms, or is it? Uh... Uh, yeah, well, no. There's a couple of music videos on YouTube, and I recently did a podcast as a guest talking about I can't remember what it's called. It's like quit your band or something. And yeah, it's basically talking about how awful bands were or whatever, and. Uh, uh, I left that band in a, a somewhat interesting <laughs> scenario. Like the yeah, the singer a... basically took loads of drugs and disappeared for like two or three weeks, and then came back and had changed his personality. <laughs> so, oh wow! Yeah. Who's that? The uh, the singer. The singer. Wow, that's um... which is a real singer oh. move to pull. <laughs> yeah, you can't do that as a bassist. No, <laughs> like I've changed my entire personality. Cool, your entire personality was just stand there. Yeah, and play. Because I used to do a lot when I was sort of a teenager in my late teens. The my mates were all in bands. Yeah, you've <laughs> I've just looked away for a second <laughs> and turned back, and you've got an adorable kitten gr- crawling yeah. all over you. Actually, and yeah. that is a, just such a lovely sight gag. If That's... you just look away, there's a kitten. Look yeah. away, he's gone again. I, w- just... I was waiting for you to look back. She uh, she just ran along, and I just caught her from uh, hitting the uh, from hitting the space bar, which would have ended it all. <laughs> Yeah, no, no one ever tells you about this. Do a podcast, they say. Get into. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, she bit. Oh no, sure. don't she bit through my bit through, bit through my headphone cable the other day. So I'm wearing a different oh, pair wow. of headphones, and this yeah. this pair are expensive. So if she bites through these ones, I'll I'll be upset. <laughs> How long you had a kid? Two weeks. I mean, a relatively short time, I'd imagine. Four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, two weeks. I think coming on three weeks. Oh, awesome! But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm um, I'm really interested uh, in how many of my friends have bought pets in lockdown. Yeah, because just the amount of people who were like, "Yeah, our landlord said that we weren't allowed a dog," but on the other hand, they offered us no discount over the yeah twelve months that we've been earning no money, and there've been no help whatsoever. So we're just going to have a dog. Yeah, and they can swivel, and uh, or like we were worried that we wouldn't be able um, able to have enough time with them, and then you know because it's bad if we go out to work, but then our jobs have said basically even when this goes back to normal, don't come in. Yeah. So um, yeah, the amount of people have just gone. Yeah, I bought a cat. I want a cat. I'm having a cat. Yeah. Fair play. Yeah, it's nice. I uh, thankfully I uh, I own this place with my wife, so uh, we could do whatever we Lovely. want. But yeah. <laughs> That was a very sort of like you were very humble about that, where you were like, I should be bragging about that. <laughs> Actually, I own this place. No wife. I've done all right. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, it's been a good year. Yeah. Well, not year, but um <laughs> Yeah, I think we're all just when this is all over, we're mentally compressing this down. It doesn't matter how long it'll be, to a year. In the same way that sometimes you like the fifties didn't end in 1959 no and the 60s didn't start in 1960 if you look at the like the clothes that people wore and the attitudes that people have like the 60s starts in about 62 and finishes in about like 71 or whatever and 
there's loads of things where you're like, wow, that's so 70s. And you're like, that's 1984. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's just the, you know, the sort of like, oh, everything's uh, like neon and leather. And yeah, that's that's sort of like a short period of the 80s. And so I think when people are like, oh, 2020, we'll just be like, yes. I mean, that did include like 20% of 2021. But yeah. it's fine. We'll just crush it all together. Yeah, this pandemic year, and they'll be like, wasn't it four years? And you're like, the pandemic year. I'm a spreadly 33 year old. Like, <laughs> yeah, and, uh, not having it. You're not taking this off me. I mean, uh, 2016 ended in like 2018 somewhere. So, <laughs> yeah, it was that sort of, yeah, these very weird feelings. I think it's very interesting as well when people are like, oh, I can't wait for everything to get back to normal. And you're like, there's certain bits that we, should recognize even though they were normal were bad yeah and we should change those you know? yeah 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 oh, i can't wait for, for everything to get back to normal and like just there to be a normal amount of homeless people on the streets yeah because currently there's way too many and i can't wait until there's just three or four every street and you're like no like we should <laughs> take <laughs> go back yeah i can't wait until everything goes back to normal and the stock market keeps fucking us you know <laughs> no like we should put some regulation in now while we're doing things yeah it did like especially with stuff like which has happened with like working out of offices and yeah exactly yeah loads the of meetings to work down. and the you know and i think we could have green resurgence public transport resurgence yeah uh if we play it smart and just go cool we noticed that you didn't actually need to do certain things like we didn't all need to get out of the office at uh, get into the office at 9 a.m so uh, and you didn't need to come in three days out of the week so we're just like stay at home yeah like stay at home do your work like don't go to a press on your lunch break pick yourself something from the garden you know yeah 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 that would be uh, like so much better for everyone's mental health. And because even the people who are on a less busy train would be like, well, this is nicer for me. I've only taken about two train journeys during lockdown, but they've both been like, oh, this is quite nice. Yeah. <laughs> this is I've got a space to myself. I can, like, I'm not playing over somebody, like, my headphones in over somebody else's, like, mad <laughs> music. So. Yeah. Quite nice. <laughs> So yeah, do wonder if there's a bunch of stuff that we can get rid of once we. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like I moved house uh, a few years back. I've been living with friends for a year. We'd all moved in together, and then we all moved out at the same time. And there was a bunch of stuff that, when it came to our moving day, we were like, oh, "I've left your thing in the hall," and they go, "That's not my thing." And they turned out it was no one's. Yeah, it was like some weird. And we were like, "Oh, we all." avoided this for a year <laughs> all thinking the other person was an idiot for having ever and it just i forget even what it was it was like some weird canvases or something that had been like half painted and we all assumed the other person had done it amazing and then you're like oh no one likes it it was rubbish and we all hated it and it was probably <laughs> left over from it, the previous tenants and it had just got moved out of somebody's room on the first day and then into one of the little storage places and then everyone's like oh this is taking up loads of the storage space but <laughs> and no one owned it it was terrible and i think there'll be lots of that from the end of the pandemic when we all get vaccinated and go out into the sunshine yeah we'll all be like yeah do you remember <laughs> do you remember that terrible thing and everyone's like shh we're not doing that anymore <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah we we never wanted to do that who did want to do it oh, no, it was just there it's yeah, just a yeah, thing that we did exactly like yeah can't think of anyone specific because there's somewhere you're like Yes, I, I mean it's always an interesting one where like because I think they're going to try and do like the congestion charge in everything inside the M25. Yeah, basically to try and force you not to have a car, and that is cool if you are able to do public transport. But I've got a car. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I need it quite a lot. I do gigs like when when I am not doing. Uh, when it, like if gigs come back, I will need a car again. Yeah, and you're like, oh, yeah, that would suck for me. I would, <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's probably. I mean, these are the things you have to toss off about against, you know, yeah, everyone against uh, the needs of you against the needs of everyone, and probably would be easier if they just pedestrianised the entire London and yeah. just went, yeah, walk places be nicer. I was just we'll put some flower pots in. I was going to ask about that actually. So you have a car, like. Do you, how, how much have you moved your boat? So I have to move my boat every two weeks. But during lockdown, the Canal Trust just said, don't move it. 
Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that makes but sense. When I m- first moved to London, I lived on my brother's drive, which was like a pain in the ass because he lives southwest London. And so when I moved sort of further up the River Lee, which is the river that goes from sort of Bow up to through Tottenham and out into like, right. Essex somewhere. Once you get further up past Tottenham, there are like free car parking spaces. You're like, oh, great, yeah. I can have a car and I can move things like huge bags of coal from places to my boat and like when i was you know ripping out an entire room of the thing and taking you know huge t- tons of wood and stuff like that yeah uh, and going right i need to go to the tip with that or i can put it one piece at a time into a bin which i think is not <laughs> what they want <laughs> uh we are like yes we've put these bins here for you know crisp packets and dog mess and you're like cool there's a kitchen unit they're not particularly happy with that <laughs> So, so, you know, the same bits where you're like, oh, it is useful for me to have this. And yeah, because where are you? You're uh, Essex, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. South End. Well, sort of South End. Shrewsbury. But uh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Because obviously you have to have a car there, yeah. I'd imagine. Yes. Yeah. 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 Because it's just like getting in and out of London, I imagine, is doable. And then everything else isn't. Uh, Yeah, pretty much. I still prefer to drive into London. It's still it's cheaper. Yeah. The train yeah, lines yeah. over this way are so expensive that it's cheaper to drive into central London. And yeah, it, which is it's crazy, nonsense. isn't it? Uh, because, I mean, that's the thing that they that they never do where they're like, everyone should get out of their cars. And you're like, cool, if you make it cheaper and easier yeah. for me to take the tube, I will. And they're like, oh, no, if yeah. anything, we're going to put the tube prices up because you now have to use it. And you're like, like, I have a bit of joined up thinking. Yeah. Like, just have, Cause it was only a, help us out. Like, it's only- like it was always supposed to be cheaper to be like a better, you know, more economical alternative yeah. to uh, an ecological alternative, even as I like both work. But then they said, oh, yeah, well, people are using that. So let's just charge loads and loads of money. And everyone's gone. Yeah. Well, fuck the environment. Let's <laughs> just... <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it's <laughs> it's just mad as well. Because there's certain places where you're just like, so the city of London, like the actual financial centre, they were like, they did one of those studies on it and they were like, yeah, we should pedestrianise the entire thing. It's the one, it's like the best served square mile in the country for yeah. public transport. And so if you walk out of your, wherever you are in that little uh, square mile, you can get on six different tube stations yeah. within like 350 metres. You, you can go anywhere from there. It's really easy. And they were like, so yeah, we should, there should be. And we can pedestrianise this easily. There should just be no cars because there's no need for them. Yeah. And then loads of bankers went, yeah, but I like having a car to my office. So, And they went, well, what can we do? <laughs> like, you give it, you pay us quite a lot of money to hear your opinions. So yeah. what are we going to do? And you're like, yeah, that was the one, that was the time that you should have, you know, taken a bit of leadership, being slightly unpopular with the banks for a bit. But they're never going to do that. No. Uh, they're going to, Force it on to um, you and me because we're not going to kick up a fuss. Yeah, that's it. We'll just uh, roll well, over. If we do kick up you. a fuss, we're going to do an online petition and they're going to ignore it. Yeah, or talk about it at open and mic night. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll stick it to the system. <laughs> guys, guys, six... you hear me now in the government? <laughs> no, no, we're not hearing you. We don't care. six people in Crouch End. <laughs> Cheer. <laughs> Yeah, there's loads of these stuff. Like it's why I um stopped doing any sort of like overt activism. Yeah. It's just because the it was very it was like easier to do and less uh is to go, yeah, uh, I'm not gonna go on a march because I'll get emotionally invested and then nothing happens and yeah. It's like, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, like four million people, which was what, like Fifteen percent of the country went on the Stop the War march in the against the Iraq War, and they, it was like on the news for a week, and that yeah. was it. Yeah, and then they were like, "Yeah, for me, like fifteen percent of the country turned up at once to say we don't like this war," and that presumably would have been a lot of people also who couldn't get on it, and they were like, "Yeah, but what are you going to do?" And everyone went, <laughs> "Yeah, what are we going to do?" It's like it's it's mad. This yeah. is just sort of like. We went, oh, okay, well, I mean, at least what we'll do is we'll finish that in 15 years. And they were like, nah, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> like, All right. It's absolutely uh, insane. If they, they get, uh, like, horrible, so the cynical thing to say, but they are generally going to do what they're going to do. And you've got to pick your little small battles and go, absolutely. this is what I'm against. 
Yeah. Yes, I'm going to. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. You yeah, will. You will struggle to win the war, but you you can win petty grievances. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the the little small things, and I mean, it's yeah, it's a weird one with um, living on a boat because it is sort of an environmental thing itself. Yeah. Where you're like, I am, because one of the really interesting things was when lockdown first kicked in. They said, do not move any boats at all. Yeah. And the change to the river itself, even though it's fully canal, so it's, but it's still got some flow of the river. So because the engines weren't churning up the mud at the bottom, the plants grew from the bottom. And because the plants grew, the fish started coming back. And because the fish started coming back, the water became really clear. Yeah. And so the River Lee last summer was beautiful like oh, really pure and clear and then like people will come but they were like oh there's so much weeds in the water like you're having to if you were going along moving your boat you'd have to stop every hour and clear out the yeah. weeds from your propeller because it was just churning up because it was like you go oh this is what it probably would have been like yeah all the time if we just left these things alone but it's really and it's really interesting to be of these little small scale ones of going right uh okay what if i change from the way because I, I know a few people have changed from chemical toilets to compost toilets oh, okay and go right okay we are going to like store up pints of our own <laughs> piss and then uh we'll go like but there's like these little community flower gardens that are like actually we'll take that all along there and it's kind of weird and little interesting sort of hippie-ish things of going yes please we will have that yeah. we will have your kitchen waste and your vegetable trimmings if you want to help us and uh, we'll grow some plants and you, you, if you want us to come on your roof you'll help the bees and you're like oh cool that's sort of like quite nice like that yeah and i think that's where my my activism is at the moment where you're like yeah i've got a couple of little plant pots on my roof and hopefully something enjoys those and, yeah but then i am still running a diesel engine because that's what the engine runs off so you're like oh yeah i feel a little bit bad about that <laughs> and like, it's hard to do these little things isn't it yeah well you know make a difference where you can <laughs> yeah exactly it's got to um yeah there's so sometimes when you're like i think if they wanted to do sort of a big activism type of thing just buy all comedians electric cars <laughs> yeah so we're doing a lot of the miles if you yeah if you want us to save uh, the planet because we're gonna drive to dundee for a slight bit of validation absolutely like, it's 80 quid and two applause breaks I'm happy. <laughs> like, so that's, uh, they liked me. One person said they follow me on Twitter. <laughs> and, you know, like, we're, it's like we need to yeah, decarbonize my neediness. <laughs> Just <laughs> yeah. So if you want to save the planet, but like everyone should have a whip round and buy yeah. the neediest people. And by that, I don't mean the people who need it most. Yeah, I yeah, mean yeah. The people who are emotionally needy. Your comedians, your actors, your your, your small bands and get them electric cars and you just be like they'll save the world ta- you've taken so much money off uh, so much carbon off the roads by just feeding your ego a different way yeah my cat's been chewing it's my bit... hand this entire time she's just oh <laughs> she's lovely I keep putting her down over there visual... It's such a funny visual image because you've got it like it's wrapped around your hands, <laughs> yes, like both your hands. Yes. You just sort of, like, oh, do you know what's going on? Oh, that, that probably won't help. <laughs> I keep trying to move her, but yeah. It's, yeah, either, yeah. it's either that or I let her jump all over my laptop and, and that'll. Just let it. Let it do it. Let yeah. it live. We're, we're the trouble. Yeah, um, I did just realise, by the way, because how far into this are we? I'm not sure how long we've been going. But uh, anyway, my point being, uh, I've not done the intro. Uh, <laughs> we'll do that now. Yeah, I do, it's, it's become a thing now. I just, to be, which is weird because I, I do an intro at the start. Like I'll, I'll record an intro sort of before this and explain yep. sort of what we talk about and who you are. And, and then at the start of the podcast, I always do an intro as well. But then I, I don't do it at the start because I always forget and I always do it about this point. And uh, uh, at one time, <laughs> and then clip it back to the front. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh no, I'll leave it where it is. <laughs> <laughs> one time, I literally did it at the end of the podcast, and then said bye. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all we got time for. <laughs> yeah. Right. Anyway, I'll, you I'll should do, do you should like screw people over and be like, oh yeah, and we're gonna just do an intro, and then 
pick three things that they've not talked about. Just go, <laughs> and we'll be t- discussing uh, Russian ballet, the how to solve the Crimean problem, and uh, the best ways of, uh, so- of making solar panel at home. That's all we've got <laughs> <Yeah>. time for. <laughs> right, so... What was this called? And hello, and welcome to episode 36 of the Comedian's Tea Party with Sides, with me, Sides, and this week my guest is Paul Savage. Hello. Hello. Yeah, cool. I mean, I literally that that will stay where it is, and it will have <laughs> me explaining that I've forgotten to do it, which I do every episode. It's just a thing. Nice. It's well, it's, it's like having catchphrases, isn't it? You just gotta. Absolutely, yeah. My catchphrase is doing the intro about halfway through the podcast. Yeah. Are you a scholar of, like, comedy history? To some extent, yeah. Yeah, because there's occasional things that I read of, like, musical, uh, music hall comedians. So, like, yeah. vaudeville and, like, um, so these were, like, what, 1800s into the early 1910s, 1920s? Yeah. And they'll be, like, you'll find someone on, like, Wikipedia who was like, Spangly Bangles was a musical entertainer, a film star of which four seconds of footage still exists. Yeah. And he was most noted for his catchphrase, not without my trousers, young lady. And there would be <laughs> nothing else about him. And like, you Google and this just comes back to that. And you're just like, oh, <laughs> like this is, this is the thing that you could, like in a hundred years time, they'll be like, Cy Debs was a multi-award winning thing. He was most noted for his putting of the intro really late on in his podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I mean, years no concept. Like, so, so what? <laughs> yeah, like, oh, it's brilliant. He used to put his intro towards the end of the podcast. He'd do it every week. I, yeah. like... <laughs> I start to think that they, they won't like my sitcom because all of the scenes are completely out of order. Yeah. The story makes no sense, yeah. I think you could probably get away with that as like a artistic choice where yeah. people would be like coming out stroking and be like, oh, very Lynchian. Mm. <laughs> did, did you understand what was happening with the... I always find that with reading autobiographies where sometimes I just want to be like, I see why you've done this, where it flicks forward and backwards, but just put it in an order. Yeah. Just put it in, a, put it in one order because at the moment you're jumping back and forth all over the place and I don't know why. like. Also, it's very difficult to build tension into an autobiography. <laughs> if they're like, oh, would that little brave boy ever get up on stage? Well, I know that you do because it's an autobiography. Uh, like, yeah. He was too shy and his stage fright was crippling. Well, I know that you get up on stage eventually because I've bought the autobiography of an actor. So I'm going to assume yeah. that at some point you do. Like, I find it's a similar thing with, like, do, do you watch any of the sort of DC tv show uh, no but i'm aware of them yeah because i i'm glad they've ended is where <laughs> i'm at with them i've watched them from the start yep. and like i'm a completionist so I, I i need to watch the entire thing and i i hate it it's ter- they're so <laughs> bad but i just i've got to keep watching because i've started watching yeah but one of one of my biggest gripes with it are when they do the flashbacks and like they'll end an episode on a cliffhanger during a flashback. Like, <laughs> will they make it? Of course they'll make it. We can see them later. Like, <laughs> there's no jeopardy whatsoever. Like, I'm not concerned for their safety because yeah. they're obviously fine. It's one of the things that you that I found really interesting about like like flashbacks and flash forwards and stuff is that when they don't do that in certain things, it was quite quite like Game of Thrones. Was that a? It was all basically linear. And yeah. also, they didn't tell you, this is the story of how I became king of the things. It was just sort of yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you don't know how it ends until it ends. And I think that's what most people were quite annoyed about, was less that the way it ended was the fact that they, it didn't end the way that they'd already written it in their heads. And they were yeah. like, no, I think they should have gone, <laughs> like, why did he do And I mean, there were some little stupid choices that but it mostly made sense over the course of it and more or less the it was just like it was a few people who were just like no but i i'd invented a story in my head that i think's better and you're like, yeah well, that's cool that's allowed but like you can't be angry at a tv show for not ending the way that you wanted it to yeah absolutely uh, yeah there was, a, there was a friend of mine who was like you shouldn't be allowed to criticise TV if, unless you're willing to pitch a better idea. And I was like, yeah, but that is the problem, is that everyone thinks they've got a better idea of yeah, the way yeah. it should be done. And they're just like, yeah, yeah. It's, we move through this as a sort of weird collective. Yeah. But yeah, 
Yeah, it's very strange having like written a tiny amount where you're like, I can't imagine anything that I've written being important to fans enough to, yeah, to where people are angry at it because I've like, yeah, I've got about six fans of my comedy. Like, obviously, I've got <laughs> enough people who like it enough to be to sell a book, to, you know, so I, for me to make a living. But that is yeah. just people who are fans of comedy in general and sort of me in the abstract. And then I've got yeah, six, they've seen you six, and they like comedy. Yeah, exactly. And then I've got six fans of me and they scare me. I'm like, what? <laughs> why? Why have you? Like, oh yeah, I've bought all your books. You're like, I've put three out. That's terrifying. Like, I've uh, I've only just got a copy of all of my books. I had to rescue two from because <laughs> I didn't have a copy of my first two. Because uh, oh, really, I'd, I'd, yeah, like they were on a shelf at my parents' house, and then I because I was like, I'll keep those two back. And then I got an order in and I'd sold those before I'd even realised because I sell all my oh, own books. Right. Because when I say I've got a book out, um, I've, it's printed through a legitimate publisher. But when you're at the level I'm at, I sell most of mine. After shows in Edinburgh is the big time right. I sell most of mine. Or at little comics fairs. Like they are, They exist in bookshops. But where I've specifically gone up to a bookshop and gone, and put six of my books in there and my mates who own bookshops there's about three of them go go on then like we're doing this because we're nice this isn't like i don't have like a big publishing contract or anything like that yeah because it's so difficult to do these things like i know um oh absolutely a friend of mine who's like he writes kids books and he's got really nice reviews for them, multiple awards, goes into schools occasionally and teaches like lessons on them, uh, and does like, or an assembly or whatever, and goes in and like, this is how I wrote yeah. this book. Like, you've been reading it for the last month. Ugh, and that's pretty cool. But he's got a job as a postman because he, uh, that's how he actually pays the bills. And that's what allows him to write. And it's the same with, I know quite a few comedian friends who have got a book out, but the doing comedy is the bit that makes them a living is yeah, the, yeah, yeah. um and i believe that the the metrics of it are even worse than comedy is for you know being really? a full-time author is the job of about 20 people in the uk yeah. it's not like there's a friend of mine who is a author she's called joe Ballury, and she writes i would describe it as chick lit but it's not shit right it's sort of right. like it's very funny quite filthy women's just sort of like what would we call women's literature but like it you know it's like a pink book and then scrolly fonts but and it's about people getting together or not getting together but it's like funny and good i've described that terribly <laughs> but she basically makes her money she's my next every <laughs> every time that it's been sold to a different country to be translated she's like yeah. great that's the mortgage paid but like you have to keep plug it like she better she was like i might just like be great if a netflix thing came in and yeah t- took it because otherwise i'm just going to keep having to write these books and put one out every year and y- yes like pl- please do come and yeah because i mean it's very interesting because there's just, like apparently there's very different cultures across book things oh, right. so like iceland loves books oh really yeah so like christmas eve tradition in iceland is that you get a present on christmas eve so you have a big dinner and then you all give each other a book and then you stay up reading that book until christmas day Oh, right. Yeah. And so, like, the book sales in Iceland are ridiculous. And, like, yeah, the, yeah. the money, therefore, is quite good for it. Whereas, like, I know authors who are like, oh, yeah, uh, my book's doing really well on Amazon. It's the bestseller this month. That's great. But I get 50p off a book, yeah. uh, off each book sold. Whereas, if you actually want to buy a book off me, buy it off me because I've got a box that I got from the publisher and I make eight quid off a book. And it's yeah. mad that like that that's allowed that that's a different scale of these things. Like, have you ever had? Have you ever been in anything like? So your song's been on like TV or like you've been in a background part of a TV thing or whatever. No, nothing, nothing that's earned me money. Yeah, yeah, because I I've seen like residual checks from other people who are like, you got one pound forty three because they played your sketch on Senegalese TV or something yeah. like. <laughs> or like your thing was in an ad your background role in an advert was picked up so you get another two pence <laughs> just 
there's some really funny ones like that where they just like honestly why why send it out <laughs> just yeah, yeah, yeah. It just, just surely it. costs more to send out a check. I remember having books for sale with somebody and then completely forgot about it. And then, like, a year and a half ago, they sent me a, uh, a thing just going, oh, I've got some money for you. And I'm like, oh, great. And then they put <laughs> £3.40 in my account. <laughs> like, oh, amazing. Oh, honestly, mate, you could have kept that. Like, you, you could have yeah, bought, yeah. bought, bought me a pint the next time and I wouldn't have noticed. I'd have been like, oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> It was a, like, it's a very odd way to make a living, but then I think everything is, isn't it? <laughs> like when you when you get down yeah. to the nitty gritty of making a living, you're like, yeah, isn't that a weird, isn't that a weird way to? I mean, me, me, me and my brother having a conversation about it was those furry meerkats for the, the compare the market adverts, and it was yeah, like yeah. now co- you can collect the furry little stuffed meerkats, yeah, and then you're just going that's somebody's job, that is somebody. <laughs> had to like one person pitched the word meerkat sounds a bit like market then four other people went yeah it does and then somebody had to draw a meerkat and then somebody had to like like a little sketch of one then somebody had to like draw one in animation software to make it look a bit like 3d probably a whole team of people had to do that and then somebody had to like sat there for hours going is that the voice is that the voice going you know i'm a yeah, milker yeah. i'm a milker i'm a milker i'm a milker <laughs> like that was somebody's job and then somebody had to be like making a roll of fake plastic fur to then yeah. cut out bits to then make imaginary like little stuffed animals for a meerkat you've seen on tv just going that's fucking mad <laughs> that's like yeah 50 people's jobs has been part of it creating a little meerkat doll that we set up. Yeah, because someone wanted to ensure the diatsu. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just when you think about some of those things, you go, God, the word, the world is weird. Yeah, yeah, it is odd. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm quite low energy. I, uh, I've been up since ten past five. Oh, uh, why? Oh, because of work. Work, yeah. Yeah. I, um... I, I fell asleep on my lunch break. <laughs> oh, bless you. Yeah. I was drinking a bottle of water and just sort of realised that my eyes have been closed for about 10 seconds. So. <laughs> yeah, there's, I was, so I basically my sleep pattern is just generally I go to bed about one in the morning and get up like 10 ish, and that works fine for me. And then there'll be points like, so my engine came out of my boat yesterday and they were like, yeah. okay, cool, we'll come between nine and 11. And so I was having to like set myself an alarm for seven o'clock and just be like, Oh, this is gonna suck. This is gonna yeah. This is gonna really suck. You're gonna because uh, you're just not used to it. You're like, uh, and it is a sign of how cosseted my life generally is. is sort of <laughs> like having to get up at like the times that I've had to set alarms for like four or five in the morning. I've been the worst. Oh, they're in, they're in the top ten worst things that have happened to me, and the. Um, <laughs> And there's people who just do it every day. Like, yeah, I get up at four and then I go to the gym for an hour. And you're like, oh, I yeah. wouldn't do that if I if I was well rested and enjoying myself. So how yeah. you put those two things together, I don't know. I've got a friend who does that for fun. Yeah. He I, just goes to the gym. It, like he wakes up. Because uh, like, I, I said to him the other day, like I sent, uh, I mean, a, a group message with him. And I sent a message saying, like, oh, yeah, I've just got up for work and was saying about something. And he's like, oh, gross, yeah, ugh. And I was like, but you're awake as well. And he's like, yeah, but this is just the time I'd be going to the gym. And I was like, how is that better? <laughs> like, at, at least I'm being paid. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't get the... Because I, I, I'm i now having to force myself to exercise just because my body is going. Yeah. All right, you are 37 now. You need to start it does slow down yeah yeah you just just, things where clicking and everything hurts and you go right okay this is because you've got no core strength so you need to get some core strength and you're like okay well i'll i'll do uh, so just little bits of like you know doing some weights doing some squats in my because they're you know small scale things that you can do quite easily yeah and going yeah i know it's both i know this hurts if you do it badly and you're doing it wrong think i'm doing it right and then everything still just hurts <laughs> like wh- yeah. why is what is like surely exercise should benefit you like it it's should, a different kind of hurt it should feel better and they're like yeah, yeah no you get like a runner's high from when it stops or from like t- like 
or like you, it feels good to exercise and then two days later all of your muscles are twinging and hurting because you've got yeah. lactic acid building up you know like, well that just shouldn't happen like if bodies yeah. were meant to exercise and feel good surely you like two days after doing exercise you get like a oh this hurts a bit but like it's more to remind you to go and do more like or like yeah, yeah, yeah. just a, like a notification is what i want rather than yeah. a actual physical pain is it just going do a bit more exercise and you go i will do <laughs> not, yeah. not like it, well, the, oh your uh, your back is seized up because you're trying to do too much you're like i didn't try that hard yeah but that's it like the, the more you do it the the less it hurts but if you do it every now and then yeah. it's it hurts every time yeah i but, think that was my problem when i used to play five aside was i was only playing every saturday morning yeah and that's not enough you need to play like you yeah. need to do something midweek to be like oh it hurts so back to back <laughs> to normal hurts so back to normal and then you start building up like a tolerance and you start it whereas i was just and i wasn't even playing every week because you know it's quite difficult if you're gigging friday saturday night to be like all right actually i'm in cardiff this weekend or whatever so i can't play five side. and then you're just sort of like i'm playing twice every month and doing no good to myself you just go yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm i'm not getting fitter i'm not getting better I'm, it just hurts <laughs> but that's the thing yeah, actually I, I, what i want to get back into is is just playing it just because i'm rubbish at like running because i get bored I get, yeah. and then i, I really like it you really like it or you yeah yeah that's cool but like i'm like oh yeah i'm, I'm running a board it hurts i want to stop i'll stop whereas if i'm chasing a ball i can just keep going for yeah. much longer because it's keeping my attention better or you know yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that just it's just an easier thing to do where you're like yeah i can push through that all oh, right well someone's whistled for it oh, okay cool so we've got five more minutes to till the whistle goes okay cool i'll run the last five minutes of that hard whereas yeah. if you're just like this is open-ended you could go as long as you want. You're like, well, then I'll stop because this. <laughs> but I'm always impressed by people who can run on a treadmill. Just oh, that yeah. is the worst. Yeah, I'm... at least running outside, I get to see sort of interesting bits of scenery and yeah, and have fresh uh, air in your you lungs. Know. Like yeah, absolutely. But yeah, yeah and, and also like vaguely know that you're wall. going to be oh right, cool. I am four streets away from home. I yeah, you know, can go and do. I could go do a little extra loop of like those three streets or whatever, or take yeah, it around yeah, the yeah. park one more time to to just give me a bit more. Oh, I fancy a bit longer today. I don't, you know, you can give yourself a little bit of that option. Whereas if you're just like, I am on a treadmill, I could do an extra kilometre. Don't want to. Yeah. I'm going to stop. And that's, yeah. my. It's not going to be any more interesting. That's my uh, problems with exercise. Yeah. I was running, what was it, last summer, I think, and it is a, like a sort of a grassy area near a housing estate, and I was running along and I heard a little rustling next to me. I turned around, I was running with a rabbit. It was you delightful. See? That's what you want, to be like a little Disney yeah. princess. Yeah, exactly. Like, if you get that on a treadmill, something's gone wrong. <laughs> you need to take your treadmill out of pets at home, because yeah, yeah. you're not welcome. Have you taken the kitten near the treadmill yet? <laughs> have you oh no i think she'd try and get on it and probably catapult herself into the wall yeah dangerous but that does Which, seem like uh, if i lot. film it it's funny if i don't it's really sad yeah there's a thing on uh, the internet of people <laughs> dancing, of, of people dancing with their dogs have you ever okay. said, like and it's now no a proper like sport in their thing where they're like they get points for artistic interpretation and like really <laughs> where they're like yes i dance and then the dog also goes through my legs and we go around and then like i make a big flourish with my arm but he comes up and like high fives or whatever and there's a thing on netflix which is get what it's called but there's basically american serious documentary voiceover and the style of it yeah so, you know like like the last dance or whatever and you know those sports documentaries was like he was down six points going into the final 30 seconds they needed something big and then like whoa as but it uses all the music and the titles of that but for things like 
Dancing with a Dog and that thing where you, they roll the cheese down the hill in uh, Gloucestershire. Um, oh, yeah. And so they've got like people, uh, competitors in those things, like who take it seriously? Being taken seriously on this. And it's so funny because everyone's taking it seriously. I'm trying to remember what it's called, but it's really good. Yeah. It's one oh, about the, uh, about the Russian dog dancing team. And they're like, there's a woman who's just like got a studio in her backyard that's full of like <laughs> ribbons and trophies from previous dog dancing competitions. She's like, yeah, the problem is I just don't like to dance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, She's so funny. She's like, wow, you're taking this seriously. And that's it's very sweet, but it is also very funny. That's amazing. Right, I'll tell you what, that, that's inspired me to ask a question. So I've got some in more of an homage to Richard. Why is that so close to your forehead? I'm oh, sorry, I was, uh, I noticed I got a little <laughs> nail type thing and I moved, uh, I moved to uh, just finally a little edge of my nail and then I moved my phone right to it. So that was terrifying. Yeah, it's a serious question. These, are the, these are the things that you have to remember when on a Zoom call. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, so I've got some questions, which are my team urgency questions. Excellent. Uh, Can I just tell you one quick little story about doing that the other day? So I did a Zoom gig, and my friend uh, was like, oh, cool, I'll watch it. And But it was four of us in, um, like, a square doing jokes one at a time. And she was like, really interesting to watch you do that, because obviously you're all, like, laughing at each other's jokes. And then just the disdain that went across your face on some of the other's jokes. And I was like, oh, no. (laughs) Obviously, I have to not do that with my face. Go, ugh. God, I can't believe you did that. (laughs) It's all right when you're at a gig. Yeah. Sat in the dark at the back. Exactly, that's it. When you're running your own gig, you can be at the mic. Or just be like, come on, man, that's that's hack and old. You don't want to be doing that for... Have you ever had a promoter be in the room like doing that, those sort of fake like no whilst you're on stage yeah it's, one uh, of my well my story of what is probably my worst gig and i say probably because there's uh, you know because someone will come gig. out the woodwork and go do you not think that one was and you're like oh that <laughs> yeah. was awful <laughs> But there was one, and it was down the road from where I live, which is one of the worst things about it, but yep. it, was, it was horrible. And the guy had forgotten to advertise that there was comedy on. Yeah, always and, a good start. Yeah. So he just, he turned the football off to get his skinhead mates out of the bar into the back room to come and watch a comedy. So they're already angry, like they're all pissed as yep. well. And yeah, none of them want to be there. And then what they don't want is a, a mid thirty something guy just coming up and talking about kid stories and I don't know like cats and, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was sort of bad enough that uh, at one point a skinhead guy uh, came and took the microphone from me and then started singing wow. Firestarter and I said <laughs> fair enough and I went and sat down because that was me done I'm not, like I'm not, I'm not I'm not continuing with this but at one point i looked up and realized that the it well, was the landlord he wasn't the promoter the promoter was wasn't involved yeah. um, the the landlord was sat in the just like two rows away just going oh with his head <laughs> literally in his hands just shaking his head into his hands and i was yeah. like that's yeah that's not that's not a great sign <laughs> yeah <laughs> they, they they're not interested in my whimsy. <laughs> <laughs> I would say so. That is a that is a miss booking. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it, yeah. He's there's... local. He'll get it. No. 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 There's always a th- a thing where it's like I don't care what time we have been booked for. I don't care how much money. If there is football on and people are enjoying the football. We'll wait until the yeah. football's over. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, if you want me to do five minutes instead of twenty, cool. Don't turn it off at the seventy-fifth minute. I will do. Yeah, <laughs> I wait. I like, I remember one of the worst gigs I ever did was a fella called. It was a pub called the Kerrygold, which was a weird little pub in a really rough area of Birmingham, and it was one of right. those like flat roof pubs. It was called the Kerrygold because it was an Irish pub, but it was also an Indian restaurant at the same time. Right. Amazing. Uh, yeah. That's and, perfect. And uh, they had a gong show. Worst idea. Yeah. Um, and it was like, it was a group of promoters who were just sort of like, they'd basically take any gig 
and this was the bottom floor for getting into their nicer gigs uh or at least the ones the that paid was just sort of like you've got to do this one first like everyone had yeah, to do yeah. it and so we're waiting for it to start there's champions league football on it's the 85th minute one of the uh, i think it was man united playing and they went a goal down and it mattered in that match and they were like oh right if they get a draw they can still go through uh, okay so there's a bit of interest there and the promoter went around and uh, turned off all the tvs and just like Comedy's on in a minute. Oh. <laughs> Everyone was just sort of like, the people who really wanted to watch went off. Were just like, right, I'll go home. And then the people who were interested, in, who would have been interested in comedy, were fucked off by this, but also stayed to be horrible. Right? And then a few months yeah. later, this pub burnt down. <laughs> uh, was, I, I imagine it's a direct result. <laughs> yeah. Well, there was a whole thing. Like, like it was a quite a big news story at the time of whether it was like. It was either an insurance job on the inside of this uh, company who had done the insurance job, or like it was a protection racket that they weren't going to pay, and they were like, right. and then the, the gangsters burnt it down, and all of the everyone in comedy was just like, it was one of us. <laughs> it will have been someone who played one of the gongs, and we're not going to grass each other in. Just <laughs> someone did an arson, and they've done properly. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Um, in case anyone from Birmingham Police is listening, it wasn't me. Yes. Why are you nodding? Why are you saying it's you? <laughs> it's, it's it's Zoom. <laughs> anyway, your uh, your questions. <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted. Yeah. Right. So yeah, I've got a few that. Right. Oh, first of all, what are you drinking? I am drinking decaf tea. Ah. Any particular brand or just uh, whatever you find? Yes. What is my particular brand? So my brand of choice is not written on the side of the thing and I've got rid of the original packaging. I think it was, I think it was Tetley. Oh, nice. I'm not sure. Yeah, classic. Mm. Yeah. I've got some tea bags. A friend of mine sponsored a show that I did called Free Tea and Biscuits. And she, because we did it up in the fringe, done it a few years in a row. And it's basically quite good for an early afternoon. Like, just go, do you want to, come and see some comedy and have a free cup of tea and a biscuit and like you'll just get people going oh yeah okay yeah that sounds so great. I've got a load of virtual tea bags that I've still got because we got given about 4,000 of them and I was oh, like wow. I'm having these keep them no. so they're my ones that have got real caffeine because I can't have it anymore I am too much of an ADHD insomniac to yeah. have caffeine anymore that'll do it yeah yeah, because I'd, I'd like to point out to the listeners that I did send Paul some tea, yes. but uh, it, it hasn't arrived yet. Excited to get it when <laughs> yeah. it eventually comes. <laughs> yeah, there's a few nice ones in there. Oh, excellent. There's, uh, and a few shit ones. No. <laughs> <They're> all, <laughs> oh, there's all, there always is. Like I've been doing in lockdown a few of these, you know, the beer order type things where they're like, Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll pick you, a, we'll hand pick you a crate. And you're like, Honestly, you can just send me eight different IPAs. I don't mind. And they're like, no, but I've got a smoked porter that really, yeah. I think, well, I mean, I'm going to drink it eventually, but it won't be my first choice. And I probably won't like it. <laughs> just you can send yeah. it. And I think now that now they are doing just sort of like, it's eight craft beers, but they're all very similar. <laughs> like, we, <Yeah. laughs> we know what you like. They're all, yeah. they're all four to 6% and they are pretty similar so knock yourself out <laughs> have a variety pack with very little variety you're like thank you yeah <laughs> nice like a comedy night with six white straight men <laughs> yeah that's um but like having run gigs myself and you were like yeah i'm gonna have a show every time there's women and people of color and all the people from the lbgq community there's gonna be one of each i know all the shows and you will just get People in the audience who are women and uh, black people, they just go, "Yeah, we really like the white straight man." <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, good. Like, I'm glad, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not a bad. Like, so sometimes you can be programming gigs for your own purposes, trying to be woke as fuck, and the audience aren't particularly asking for that. Some, yeah. Sometimes they don't like. They don't notice that they're all straight white men. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Very odd. Yeah, that's the funny thing. Is uh, like because uh, I did a gig. Where was it? Uh, somewhere in Manchester, and I I got a friend of mine booked on it so that we could share the ride up there. 
And I asked about getting another friend on, and he said, oh, we can't have too many people from Essex because everyone's going to think, like, it's an Essex-based show or something. <laughs> and we got there, and, like, my style and his style were so completely oh, different. Yeah, yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah, we probably could have... We probably could have had someone else in there. <laughs> yeah, it's not. We're not. It's a not. It's an Essex takeover. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, even in South End, you are. Yeah. Is that where Rich Wilson is? It is. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. If you were, if you had you and Rich Wilson on, I can't imagine that you could have much more variety, even within no. the straight white men who live in South End Essex. You know? Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. Exactly. Like, there's a. There's still quite a variety there. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Terry Alderton's from down the road, so exactly. that's another. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Again, that is like three points on a very different triangle. That is. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. <laughs> I can't remember how we got onto that, but good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> These are always the things that I find when I had a, a podcast would really annoy me, is because I would be editing it. It was me and my mate, and um, we just have a chat every couple of weeks. And yeah. we'd say things like, I'll just pick that up again in a second. Or, yeah, and how did we get did. onto this? And it would always turn out the way we got onto it was a really boring way. And the things that we said we'd yeah. pick up, we didn't. And you'd have to cut all of it out. <laughs> <You're just> like, <laughs> yeah. Well, that is very frustrating. Like, Can you stick to our fucking subject, please? <laughs> <laughs> But when my cat ran in earlier and uh, you you were saying something, you were telling me about something, and then my cat ran in and started making a load of noise. I don't know what it was. I led it back and I go, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it didn't. But yeah, for the sake of that making sense, for I'll, the, for the yeah. listener, we did finish that story. Like, oh, yeah. Otherwise, they are going to be fuming. Yeah. yeah. But I've, you know, I'm going to leave this bit in so that they can hear that and go. Uh, oh, okay. But he did say. He yeah. did say. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, do you uh, do you dunk a biscuit? You a biscuit dunker? Uh, yes, yes, I am. What's your biscuit Big of choice? Fan of a hobnob, especially a chocolate hobnob. But I will allow yeah. a normal hobnob. I would say that is the answer nine times out of ten. I've decided as a like I don't particularly watch what I eat, but I am aware that if I eat things, I might as well enjoy them. So, like, if I'm having biscuits, I'll have good biscuits. I don't. Yeah. I just don't think a rich tea or a digestive is worth the calories when I could just like, yeah. ah, yeah, you could, I could eat four digestive biscuits or I could have a biscuit. I like, so yeah. you know, I could have one of those, you know, like they're in Aldi and they're called like all butter cookie, like yeah. f- finest range, but they're still about 80 P and they're great. Just have a, yeah. I'll have one of those instead and be like, ah, oh, yeah. much, much, I feel much better with myself for doing that. It's like I've, I've always start... been a fan of saying, do things in moderation, but if you're going to do it, do it right. Yeah, have you eaten Tony's Choco Lonely? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's the other one I'm like that for, where I'm like, if I'm only going to eat a bar of chocolate every so often, yeah, I, that's I'm the willing one. to pay a little bit more. It's quite a lot more, actually. It's quite expensive, Tony's Choco Lonely. Yeah, but I will, is, yeah. like, I could demolish a bar of that, in the whereas, you know, something like, Cadbury's, I'm like, ah, uh, yeah, I'll take a couple. It's great, yeah. but like, uh, I'd much rather eat good chocolate less often. Yeah. And plus the uh, the nice thing about Tony's chocolate only is it is all ethically made. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which a, is very nice. There's a thing on the back of it where it's like, you know, when you hear things and you're just like, you shouldn't have to say that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sort of like Tony's chocolate only. We believe that all chocolate should be slavery free, and you're like. Yes! How is that? <laughs> yeah. like, <that's>, Didn't <laughs> realise it was up for contention. Because it, yeah, but it's like, we believe that no chocolate bar should have a big shit running through it. You're like, well, that just raises <laughs> questions that who's not believing in that? I think, yeah. right? We believe chocolate bars shouldn't contain razor blades. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yeah. No, well, now you've just got me worried about other <laughs> chocolate bars and razor yeah. blades. That's, yeah. Also, like, we believe as if that's just, yeah. We believe it's just our weird little, yeah, it's a weird little quirk we've got. Right, I've I've got a couple more questions yes, that please. are we're going away from tea based questions now, and I'm going to start off with a question that a previous conversation led me to want to ask, sure. and that is if you had to uh, for a competition dance with an animal, what animal would it be? Is this for the most fun that I'd have, or to look the best? Absolutely up to you, and uh, give me your reasons. <laughs> which, uh, which would it be? Fun or professionalism? So I think I think a baby goat is very cute. Oh yeah, and they got great um, balance. But yeah, oh actually yeah they do because I was going to say it's going to be quite difficult to coordinate. But yeah, that would be quite good. 
and then yeah because because then you're just riffing off what they're doing yeah. whereas if i've got to lead probably like a sloth <laughs> and then you can just do a big waltz just yeah sure yeah you've got you've just yeah because you, you, <laughs> i'm not a natural dancer so i don't know the yeah uh, yeah yeah but yeah, probably uh, probably just baby goats and go wild, just yeah. run around with them. Um, a little a little and, kid. Wee! Hey. <laughs> He's got jokes. This comedy podcast. <laughs> right, and uh, as a, as an alternative sort of secondary question, following the same subject, yep. if you had to do an activity with a dog, uh, yep. in a similar way, what activity would you do? Uh, if it's for TV, say. I'm trying to think of the things that I like doing that I would quite like to do. Yeah. Uh, that, that, you know, that I'm reasonably good at. Tell you what I'd quite like to do with a dog is do art at the same time. So, yeah, uh, that's nice. I don't know exactly. Cause, uh, but you, maybe something like if they're pausing paint and they run yeah. around on a canvas and then I draw yeah. around it or stick something. I, I was thinking but, maybe dip, dip their tail in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So they're. So pour, get their paws, like big paintbrush on the, the tail so it shakes out in like cool, interesting ways. Maybe something yeah. to the front. I mean, that would be quite a cool one you could do with... I went to a place where it was light-based art. So they had a camera oh. and a projector, and then you get, they gave you certain things so you could like that picked up on the camera and then played it behind you. So you could... Right. They were like, right, well, you make some shapes in the air and it'll pick up and throw it behind you on the thing and um, that'd be quite a cool one to do with a dog is just sort of yeah. like if you could go right okay we're gonna track his tail wagging pattern yeah, and yeah. it'll create the background and then wherever his footprints go that creates like sunspots or whatever or like lens flares or whatever that'd be quite cool yeah oh that would be cool that actually is not a bad way if i can get all the equipment to blag pet owners out of money uh, <laughs> just, if you can work out a way to do that just go right each of his footprints does something and his tail does something and his does something yeah and then you just run around both of you together and then we'll sort of superimpose you over the top of the background that you created yeah <laughs> my one of my mates phil padgett who's a comedian calls me bilko because every so often i will come out with a get rich quick scheme that is absolutely <laughs> fundamentally flawed so i'll just be like guys i'm thinking about doing this who would be able to help me and he'll just go ah oh, phil goes up to it again <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah. nice but yeah i reckon that if i well i'll price out how much that technology is because i reckon that now, honestly, yeah. if you want to make good money doing not a great deal, flashy, stupid things for pets I'm listening. is the way to do it. Yeah, yeah that sounds like, great. Because people are just like, why would I want a crystal encrusted dog bowl? And they're like, because your dog will be slightly happier. And they're yeah. like, okay, no, <laughs> okay. okay. That's all it is. To pay it. Yeah. I think I'd want to play golf with a dog. Oh. <gasps> That would be so fun. Yeah. 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 Make it a team enjoyable. sport as well. Obviously, he's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 So like, yeah. you hit it as hard as possible, and then he goes and fetches and puts it in the rest of the hole. And that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Bad idea. Nice. I'll put that on TV. <laughs> exactly. Right. Right. You're you're slightly older than me. Not a lot, but a little bit. Do you drink tea to cool you down? No, it's nonsense. It is nonsense. Absolutely. Yeah, Good. It's scientifically unvalid. Yeah. Drink tea and it will make you sweat. And that's what the sweating cools you down. But you can't be like, oh, it's, I'm, I'm raising my internal core temperature. It's nonsense. Yeah, it's bollocks. The other one is it's too cold to snow, scientifically unvalid. Yeah. It is never too cold to snow. It could be too dry to snow. And that dry weather can happen when it is colder, which is a, it's a false equivalency. So. Oh not correlated nice that's a, that's a yep. good bit of, a bit of knowledge huh? <laughs> yeah there's occasional bits where i've read a thing <laughs> and then got angry about it yeah <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot of my um yeah it, a lot of my knowledge is where i is trying to is trying to argue with someone to be yeah honest. uh but being a, a factually correct pedant yeah yeah i like it i'm on board <laughs> what insect freaks you out the most and is it because it's got so many legs it's mosquitoes uh, and it's because they've got uh, horrible diseases in them and yes. uh, they bite you and i've had bad reactions to mosquitoes where like instead of it just being like a little bit of a bite it's swelled up properly yeah well and actually the like swelling's horrible. good the swelling's yeah the swelling's a good thing 
because this is this came from me doing a bit of reading. And <laughs> this is one of those things that I've read a long time ago, and I'm sure someone will get in touch and say that's not true. But I read somewhere that all mosquitoes carry malaria. But the reason that you have to have jabs in other countries is because they're different sort of variations of mosquitoes. And oh. if you're being bitten by a mosquito over here, you should let it bite you the whole way because they, in countries where you don't have to have the jabs, those mosquitoes also have the antidote to malaria. Oh, really? Yeah, so if you stop them from biting oh. you halfway I through. Didn't, I didn't think it was going to be that. I thought it was going to be like, because they, they push a bit of blood in and then suck it back out oh. and that's how you get malaria yeah, it could or be. something oh, which is uh, someone told me that you shouldn't swap them while they're halfway on because but yeah maybe it's that well there's yeah, certainly the uh, I've certainly had experiences so only, the, uh, only the females that will bite you male mosquitoes yes because they're doing it to feed their young yeah, yeah. Um, that's another I've got two mosquito facts and uh... <laughs> <laughs> lovely that's it's good questions oh thank you very much they are on a page yeah, I've got some other ones that sort of they they come in and out of of, of regular questioning, but that is I yeah. like I like the uh, dance with an animal one. I think I might make that a regular question. Yeah, good. Yeah, nice. It's always nice when you're uh, able to help the. I mean, that'll be the really funny thing is in a hundred years' time on my Wikipedia page. <laughs> the, uh, Inspired the question. Whatever the future thing is, is just go. Uh, yeah, he was a comedian. We think artist, probably possibly said he said he had some books out, but like <laughs> uh, he's most known for adding the uh, "What animal would you dance with?" question to Cy Davis's comedian's tea party, uh, and, with the, <laughs> and then obviously there'd be like loads of click throughs for that. And we're like, wow, how did they make that go? Like, not only a TV show and a movie, but how did they turn it into just being injected into people's eyes? <laughs> yeah. And, and how did Sardis get that non-sequential sitcom made? That's incredible. <laughs> yeah, that was the that was the beginning. Yeah. Speaking of your books, by the way, before we wrap up, let's tell me because yeah. that's why you're here, isn't it? No, because <laughs> <laughs> I love love having chats with my mates. <laughs> I mean, it might as well be because I've done a bunch of podcasts recently, and the the because I sell all of my own books from my own website, I can tell where people have come from. Yeah. And to, to, like, because usually there's a spike the day after. Oh, okay. Uh, so if there's like any interest, and certain ones you just like, cool, I had a chat with my mates about cricket for two hours, judging from that. No, <laughs> yeah. was, no one bought, bought comic books off the back of that. Uh, so yeah, it's a book of uh, comic strips I've drawn. It's called But Doctor, I Am a Collection of Comic Strips by Paul Savage. And it is 113, I think, of them, or 111. Uh, nice. all in a nice little package and uh, you can get that for 10 quid off my website which is savagecomic.com and uh, really annoyingly I got my website you know the website diagnostic things yeah I got one from my comedy website that was like you had 50 clicks on your page buy my book which is the one that goes to my old website uh, my uh, old book and d- d- doesn't connect through to anything and I'm really annoyed with myself because I didn't even think about that. I was like, oh, balls. So that's what I'm doing this weekend is I'm going to be making sure those two websites connect up. Yeah. Because money in the bin. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, if you want your comic, because it's got a nice big front page where I doodle in it, I'll sign it and personalise it for you if you fancy. Oh, there you go. Very nice. Cool. Very cool. And my phone is just about to run out of battery. Oh, cool. Well, I, I need the toilet. So that is good timing. That is how most of my podcasts end, actually. I need to poo now. I've got to go. (laughs) Well, I'll speak to you soon, mate. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's great to see you, man. And I'll I'll speak to you soon. Good Uh, luck with everything. Cheers, man. Cheers, mate. Bye. So that was Paul Savage. A lovely conversation indeed. You can find him on social media at just... I can't... don't know how to find the links on, on your phone. But look up Paul Savage on facebook he's on there he's also on instagram and twitter as at comedy savage on twitter and savage comics underscore on instagram so go and see what it's all about go and see what his book's about and then go and buy his book from his website paulsavagecomedy.com obviously go and buy his book but also if you're enjoying this podcast and you want to donate to help me keep it running and you know and just help me out and just show some appreciation for how much you enjoy it, then send me some money at ko-fi.com forward slash Sideves. That is S-I-D-E-A-V-E-S, Sideves. It's written in the podcast title. So 
Just go and look at that. Kofi is K-O dash F-I. It's all on my social media. Go and find it. Hopefully Paul's website works by now and you can actually go and buy his book. But if not, just, you you know, search for it. He's, he's told you what it's called. Go and look it up. You can find it. You can live. I, I believe in you. You are smart people. So thanks so much for listening. I've already got another couple of episodes recorded. Tried to record one today with someone who did quite well on Britain's Got Talent. And his Wi-Fi just fell apart at the seams. So that didn't happen. But I will get him on soon. I've got another couple of really cool, really exciting episodes coming up. So keep an ear out for those. And in the meantime, drink some tea and tell each other you love them. I love you guys. I'll see you soon. Bye.